For the past couple of uh, Sundays, I have been uh, preaching on the theme of not coming down. And if you can remember the a story, it comes out of chapter 4 of the book of Nehemiah. And it starts out that um, Nehemiah wanted to go back to his hometown. Come on, somebody. And to help to rebuild the wall. And we have talked about how that when you go back to do God's will, that there are some folk who don't like you. And it's not something that you did to them or caused to them, but it is because they want what you have. Do I have a witness here? That sometimes folk don't like you because you are doing the will of God and they're jealous that you are doing that. Do I have a witness right now? And you've got to understand sometimes that even within the church, you don't, you should not worry about whether somebody likes you or not. Do I have a witness right now? Because you've got to understand that you are here this morning for your own soul salvation. And I need to give God praise, honor, and glory. Do I have somebody in here right now? Before I get the preaching, that can give God a praise, honor, and glory right now. For where God has brought you from, don't but it doesn't matter that you love God and God loves you. Now, how many of you know church folk can be the worst folk in the world when it comes like acting like the word? There are more gossipers, Reverend Thompson, and backstabbers, and haters, and, and liars, and whoremongers in the church. I, I, feel, I feel like preaching now. And the reason why we can't get the world to come into the church is because they came into church and feel like they're still in the world. Look at somebody say, we've got to get the world out of the church. People show up to, to try to stop your vision. The devil shows up to try to stop your purpose. In this story, it says that Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem show up to try to keep you from revealing the wall in your life. Don't you realize that everybody in the church don't want you to reveal the wall? Did your mother ever tell you that misery always loves company? But is there anybody here who can say that I'm not coming down? Even though the devil has been on my tail this week, said I'm not coming down. Even when my bank account is low, my bills outweigh my bank account, my car is not running right, but I'm still not coming down. Look at somebody and say, I'm not coming down. my destiny and my identity where God's taking me. I don't care who's telling me. It could be a preacher. It could be a somebody else. But I'm not coming down from the purpose where God has brought me from. Somebody that be shouting right now because I'm definitely on your street. You can say what you want. Lie like you want. Dog me like you want Because I've come too far To give up on my destiny now Let them lie on me But I know who got my back Oh I feel like preaching right now Here's now, now, now I know you've been waiting for three weeks Now here's how You stay on the wall In the space of antagonism Number one Know how to critique your critics. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you a couple of major lessons that I've learned in life. Just a couple of lessons, Sister Leslie, that I've learned when it comes to people. One lesson is that I have to learn is that critics 
Baptism is not all bad. Can I, can I preach this way? Now, I, I, I got to tell you, the Reverend Robinson, that I will admit it was a hard lesson for me because I can't speak for you and I still act like I don't know it all the time. But criticism is not a bad thing. Can I, can I preach this thing? Now, it, now, constructive criticism, right, that's right, that's right. as much as we may not like it, right. comes from those who love us too much to refuse to allow us to act messy. When your mother gives you constructive criticism, men, about the woman that you date, anybody on my street right now, help me somebody, my mother would pull me aside and tell me that's a sneaky woman, but you've got to understand that sometimes that you got to learn it for yourself. But that was constructive criticism. And while your ego may not like what they say, your maturity ought to appreciate them loving you enough to offend you. Can I preach? You ought to be thankful, Reverend Thompson, that you have some people in your life who love you enough to offend you. Constructive criticism is a good thing. Because there are some people who will see you acting a fool and won't say anything at all. They will have a witness right now. Somebody better be clapping right now. But be thankful that you've got people around you who will see you acting a fool and will slap you up alongside your head and tell you to stop acting like that. But I also learned Mr. David that everybody that has something to say is not worth your ear. Look at somebody and say, I'm not coming down. You see, because constructive criticism, now listen to me, is what you listen to even when you do not like what is being said. But then there are some folk that have something to say that is not worth you receiving or accepting or believing or even entertaining. Let me show you in the text. It said they tried to attack Nehemiah and the Jews in the event of, of the story through the dialogue. Now watch verse 2. Notice the dialogue taking place. They asked a series of questions regarding the nature and purpose of what Nehemiah and the Jews are trying to do. He spoke to his brothers. Now, that's a key term. He didn't speak to Nehemiah. Uh -oh. Now, notice in the sarcasm, in the very implication of the question, in the series of questions, what they're really saying in today's language is, what do you think they are? Or who do you think they are? What in the world do you think that you are doing? But I want you to notice one thing about criticism. He spoke to his brothers and not and to the army. They never talked to Nehemiah. They only talked about Nehemiah. So what are you saying, Reverend? Well, now, so somebody's going to start shouting now. Because constructive criticism will always come to your face.
And you always know when a person means you good. When they only talk about you in front of your face. You don't have a witness now? I know we don't have no sneaky church book up in here right now. Do I have a witness here? But I just stopped by to tell you, I don't care how you talk about me. I don't care if it's in my face or it's in my back or it's on the side or in the front. You've got to understand that I realize where I'm going. I realize what my purpose is. And I realize who's holding my hand. Do I have a witness now? Because some of us get too temperamental. You've got to get thick skin sometime. Because you've got to realize you're not here for nobody on your right or on your left. You're here for yourself to give God. Understand, Brother Cheryl, that when, that when people love you and want to see you do better and want to help you do better, then out of love they will step to you in love. They will come to you in love. Sunday school story. And you'll always know when a person means you good because they will always talk in front of you. And people, now, Davis, we get so caught up in the church, but we waste our energy. And people who talk about you behind your back are not worth your energy. Stop listening to them. If they don't give you some uh, 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 nuggets, to, to, to jump down to help you improve your life, then tell them, as Mark says, to get the step. Do I have a witness right now? Look at somebody and say, they got to get the step. Because I just stopped by just to tell you right now, I'm tired of folks trying to steal my joy. I'm tired of folks who are jealous over me because I know where I'm going in glory. Do I have a witness right now? is when somebody don't have you, don't love you, and they want to criticize you, and they begin by, ch by saying, child, let me tell you. <laughs> now, it's not about what God has fed me to help you. But when he, when, I, I tell you, that's a sure sign that you, that you hug them and you just walk away. Do I have a witness now? Child, the Lord told me to tell you. What makes you better than me? That God couldn't just talk to me. Now, now, when somebody comes to you trying to tell you what somebody said, that is when it's time to evaluate the authenticity of the relationship with God and the relationship with you. Come on, somebody help me. Haters talk behind your back because they are not mature enough to love you and to come to you because they don't really love you. You know, Reverend Thompson, I thought all the time that my mother lied. Because when she was beating me, she said, this person needs more than it hurts you. I know that was a bare face lie. Do I have a witness now? Well, until I realized when I had my own kids. Because on the inside, I didn't want to hit my son or my daughter. But I can tell you, you can tell social services that I did beat my children. And it's too late to have me 
you rested now, that's all right. But when somebody loves you, it does hurt them more than it hurts you. I learned that as a, as a parent right, right now. But haters talk behind your back. Because they're not mature enough to love you enough and to come to you because they really don't love you. And they're insecure, insecure, insecure. Look at somebody say they are insecure with their own lives so they get to start talking behind your back. You know when somebody gets insecure about their life, they start talking about somebody else. See, because you can't control what people do. I, I can preach you a sermon on how to stop people from talking about you. Especially when you don't have purpose. There's no sermon alive for me to do that. You cannot control what people do, but you can control the maturity of your response. You cannot control what people do, but you can control the maturity of your response to what they do. Don't invite them outside the church. Don't take your earrings off. Don't go to the women's bathroom and take your weave out. Do I have a witness now? Don't put your sneakers on because you're carrying them with you. with a bad attitude. Do I have a witness now? But I just stopped by just to tell you right now this morning that nobody, nobody, nobody is going to take me down to where God has put me. Do I have a witness now? Do I have some hand raisers? Do I have some hand coppers? Do I have some popcorn Christians who know what I'm talking about right now? It's about Reverend Johnson, watch what Nehemiah does in response. Word gets out what's being said. Nehemiah does not confront them and he doesn't go to them. You see, being an administrator in a middle school, the kids will come in and say, I gotta find him because he's talking about me. And they will step up to them. And then, and then you got a fight start. Especially in the school where I'm at now. Do I have a witness now? But notice now what the maturity of Nehemiah did. Nehemiah stood his ground. Because when you come down, that's when you're on their level. Hold on. Hold on now. But if I stay where I am, I'm above them in my maturity. And I don't lower myself down to where they are even ground with me. Look at, look at verse 4. Verse 4 is his response to the destructive criticism. He doesn't talk to them. Instead, where does he go? He talks to God. Come on, somebody. He prays what is called an impregnatory prayer. I am P-R-E-G. A-T-O-R-Y prayer. And this is a prayer, this is a Hebraic prayer that you pray when somebody comes against you and you tell God to deal with it. Oh! You tell God to deal with them because you have a spiritual understanding, Reverend Thompson, that coming against you ain't coming against you. That's right. That's it. That will come back and hit you in a minute. Well, what are you, what are you saying, Reverend? It's because Reverend Thompson, when they attack you, they are attacking God because you are of the elect of God. Oh, I said something. When they attack you, they are attacking who? God. So you say, Lord, 
If I step down to him, God, that's right. I'm gonna pull my rope off. Yeah. I'm gonna take my shoes off. Yeah. I'm gonna use some vocabulary that I use pre-save time. Yeah. Come on, do I have a witness now? Now I know all of you didn't have some pre-save language. <laughs> Some of you still have that kind of language. But when you give it back to God, now notice he did not confront his attacks. He went down on his knees and said, Lord, I know I can't handle this because when I stand toe to toe with him, I'm going to knock him down. Somebody help me. What he said. And you say, God, they are messing with you. And so whatever you've got to do, go get them. Go, go get them, Lord. Now, his go get them may not be our go get them. Now, he's not going to go down with his big fist and hit somebody, no. But you've got to understand he's going to take care of it for you. Do I have a witness now? And he may even convert them or he may even have to move into, into knowing more about, about the word of God. Yeah. Come on. It's not coming from God to tell God. It's not coming to God to tell God to get them because they messed with me. That, that, that is not what Nehemiah said. And Nehemiah said, I have a clear understanding that they are trying to mess with your perfect plan for me. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Which means they are really messing with you. Yeah. And God says they try to mess up your plans for me. Handle them any way you need to. Now, how many of you know what I understand? What, I, what, I, what I'm saying today is that when your attackers come against you, and if you are of God's elect, then 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 they are messing with God. Do I have a witness now? And God says in His Word, "Help me, somebody. Touch not my." I tell you, when you when when they mess with the anointing of God, I'm telling you, things happen to them. Do I have a witness right now? When they mess with the elect of God, God will take care of them. Do I have a witness now? Do I have some witnesses in the house? Because somebody messed with you. God came down to mess with them. God has a way of moving them out of the picture so that you can walk through through on dry land. That's what God can do for you. Number one, that you've got to critique those who you've got to critique your critics. Okay, note the often authenticity of the criticism that is coming your way. If they love you, they in front of you. If they don't love you, it comes from the back of you. Do I have a witness now? And then now, when I got the second one, I'm almost through. Understand the necessity of the balance between faithfulness and readiness. That, that is a deep thing. I know, I'm going to explain it to you. We always run to verse 6 for the people had a mind to work. And that's good. Now don't get me wrong. I couldn't tell you how much can get accomplished with anything that is of God if people just had a mind and a mentality to work. I said so. Now, that's good, but that's not the end of the story. Because when you read on in verse 9, you got verse 9 up there. Sean, give me, give me, give me verse 9. It said, but we prayed to our God and posted a God day and night to meet this threat. Now, what that is saying is that yes, I've got faith. But yet, I gotta watch out. So the devil may come. Do I have a witness now? See, some of us think that all we gotta do is pray, then it goes away. But you gotta understand, help me, Elder, that you gotta pace, that you gotta post some centuries sometimes to watch out what's coming your way. And that means that you gotta be like Gideon when God told him that you got too many people and he got down to 300 and he said, Give me the water lappers. Because they're not only drinking the water, but they're looking over their back to make sure that the devil's not coming their way. That's what I mean by not coming down. Oh, I know that gets your technical devil. 
Because don't you think now? Let me give you this statement. It says prayer without preparation is presumption, which will become a problem. Can I say that one more time? Prayer without preparation is presumption, which will become a problem. <laughs> because Reverend Thomas, don't you think that the devil is running at you because you think that he's going to run away from you because you learn how to pray? Come on, do it. <laughs> he's going to send every devil's imp. He's going to send every demon. He's going to send every bad person. He's going to send them in the morning. He's going to send them in noonday. And he's going to send them because he's going to see when you are weak. Do I have a witness now? So when you pray, you're going to pray then you're going to set up some centuries. You're going to set up, the, you got to be watchful because the devil's job is to come to mess with you. Just because you know how to pray doesn't mean that the devil's going to stop praying on you. How many of you have prayed and prayed and, just, and then the devil still messes with you? And you know what? Just the Hawker that gets so upset. I don't know why the devil messed with me. I gave my life to Christ. And he said he would take care of me. Are you still alive? So that the devil can mess with you? Do I have a witness now? But how many of you watch over your back? Even though you're praying, but you just gotta make sure you gotta you gotta be ready. So faithfulness, so so Nehemiah not only knew how to pray, but he also knew to post some centuries around the wall where the weak holes in the wall were. Right. Nehemiah, he understood that he was in a battle. And if he was in a battle, that he needed to be ready and be prepared. Never be so spiritually high-minded. Never be so spiritually high-minded to the extent that you don't watch as well as pray. Do I have a witness now? Come on, you can now look at somebody and say you cannot be so spiritually high-minded. Some of us maybe instead of praying that the Lord would help you with the devil, pray for the spirit of discernment. Because Reverend, one of the reasons that the devil keeps stepping to us is because we don't have the discernment to know when the devil is stepping into our lives. Do I have a witness now? I said something. Nehemiah teaches us to respect the enemy, but don't reverence the enemy. Do I have a witness now? Even though he's not, he not omnipotent and he's not omnipresent, but he still knows where your weak things are. Do I have a witness now? And don't you realize that he doesn't come in unless we invite him in? Come on, somebody. Anybody on the street right now? You've got to invite him into your life. So therefore, if you keep him out of your life, if you watch over your back, then you know when he's going to come. Well, the third one. Third one. Look at somebody and say, I'm making progress. Let me set up my last point. Please remember the first point is that you got to critique your critics. Please remember what the second one is, is that you got to realize what, what the faithfulness, there's a, there's a balance between faithfulness and readiness. And number three, where's verse 10? Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of the labor is giving out. And there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. 
Now read with me that first part of the line. Say, meanwhile, meanwhile. the people in Judah said. Now, I got to come down for this. The third part is, is that Judah had disappeared. And you got to understand what Judah means. The third installment of the third point that will keep me up on the wall is that I've got to learn to get my praise on. Do I have a witness now? Because you've got to understand that Judah means praise. It says right there, meanwhile, the people in Judah see Don't you know that when you in Judah, you can look the devil in the eye and be helping somebody and, and you can get your praise on and everything will be all right. Do I have a witness now? It may not change your circumstances, but it may change your attitude about your circumstances. I said something right here now. If you get your shoot on, if you do your hope is built, if you do that I don't mind waiting, if you do what, what, what no Jones said, I need a double anointing right now because I need to get my shoot on. How many of you this morning right now have a Judah deep down in your soul and know where it has gotten you? How many of you in your darkest hour know that when you get your praise on, that you feel better? Look at somebody say, I feel better when I get my praise on. Not only, Brother Michael, do I have to learn how to critique my critics? You know, where it is coming from. Not only do I have to realize that the E is that I need a balance between faithfulness and readiness. But number three, in order for all of that to work, Sister Martina, I've got to have a mind to praise. Do I have a witness now? How many of you have ever been moved by a praise song? How many of you, when you read the scripture that God has given you, that it helps you get your praise on? How many of you can't sing, but yet you still give God praise? You may moan and groan. You may not even know what to say, but you will give God, you will still get your praise on. Look at somebody say, I'm going to get my praise on in spite. Let everybody stand all over the church quickly. In spite of, in spite of, I'm going to get my praise on. You know, this morning when I got up, I was feeling a little down, a little depressed. I don't want to get up in the morning to go to this school. I do not. It takes every prayer that I can. And then I'm reminded when I look back and fill my stack of bills. <laughs> Nobody, anybody hear me now? As to what I need to do. But it still wears on. It still wears on. And then I open up the mail and my I see something come from Baltimore City photo. The, the little photo thing. They were not from me. See, because my son's name car and my daughter's car are still in my name. Come on, somebody. And they're $40 each. And then if you don't pay them on time, they, they put a flag on them. And flag is $30 plus, plus the five. So I just said, that said, Lord, what else can come my way? Do I have a witness now? Then I got a time share where they, they had been calling my ex-wife and said that was going to foreclose. I said, oh, God. I said, what else can go wrong? But then I rode over this morning and we looked at my sermon. <laughs> and James, I, he said that you're not coming down, Reverend. And then I went to the third point. He said, go in before you shower. And listen to Juanita Bynum and that I don't mind waiting. 
But what I'm saying, I, I know that who holds my hand. And I know that if I were to lose my life, that I will gain it in Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. If there's somebody here today who has never, ever given their life to Christ, and you want to come up now to give the preacher your hand and God's your heart, that means that you have not publicly said to, said to God in the sight of others that I commit my life to you, that I give it to you, Lord. I tried and I messed up. So now I'm going to try the only way that's into the kingdom. Is there one today? Is there another 